We have been waiting for this moment for so long, and it is finally here. It's finally time to cut into the actual fabric of Christine's masquerade dress from the 2004 film. Yes, we are finally going to make the actual masquerade dress. I first got a rough draft of the skirt by draping it over the hoop skirt and petticoat, and then I traced it onto some wax paper to get a rough pattern. The main pink layer is a silk taffeta that I purchased in LA when I was there. I can't believe I was there, but yes, I got it there. It is the perfect coral pink color. And then a lining for the skirt made of cotton lawn. And now on to the gorgeous outer layer. It's a sheer netting. So each panel was cut three times, silk taffeta, the lining, and the netting. I first basted together the cotton lawn and the silk taffeta. Once that was done, it was time to start assembling the skirt panels. My seam finish of choice was pinked seams, and then I wanted to press them open. A good practice is to first iron the seam just as if you sewed it, and then open it up. It basically sinks the sewing stitches into the fabric better, and then you just have a nicer seam as a result. After I got them pressed open, I turned it right side out and gave it another pressing just to make sure everything was laying smoothly. And now we need to do the opening in the skirt panels. I have this fold right here that I'm going to sew like this. And when it flips over, you'll see that we have a nice clean finish right there. So I got that sewn in place. And then the other side, it's just a piece of fabric and I'm gonna sew it here and turn it around and it'll create a nice clean seam at that point instead of a raw edge right there. After getting those two pieces of fabric sewn in place, I'm now going to finish up this little bit of unsewn seam. I leave this gap so that I can easily work these panels into the area, and then I finish sewing this little bit, and that just creates a nice, even ending to the opening. And there you have a beautiful, finished closure that would be invisible if it needed to be invisible, but Mine doesn't have to be invisible because I'm actually putting the opening inside a pleat so you will never actually see the opening ever because it's so tucked inside a pleat. After that I finished up sewing all the seams of the skirt panel together and then went on to sewing the nylon netting. So I am using a very small zigzag here. And the reason for this is when stitches are sewn on a slight zigzag, they have a little stretch to them, which makes sense. And this helps with the fall of the fabric because usually skirt panels are cut on a slight bias. 
And so having that little ease in the sewing stitches help the seam blend in with the fall of the fabric. And now we combine the silk layer and the netting layer and pleat the waistband. This was something I played around with on the draft pattern, but after following that pleating pattern, the silk wasn't laying quite right, and so I had to adjust the pleating a bit, and then it got the perfect drape. Now it's time for the waistband. This is just a basic rectangle piece of fabric cut on the straight grain and I interlined it with a cotton lawn and just sewed it to the waist area. After getting the waistband sewn to the skirt, the finishing touch for that is to hand sew that second edge of the waistband down. You can also stitch in the ditch, but I prefer hand sewing. And then we attach some dress clasps. As usual, I'm using a button stitch to secure these in place. It's my favorite method. Now it's time to bustle it up. So first of all, something I didn't mention earlier is the netting layer in the back is cut a bit larger than the silk layer. And I saw some pictures that seem to point in this direction. And so I just cut those netting layers of the back panels wider than the silk layer. And because of that, I have this extra fullness that I wanted to evenly divide along the bustle area. Once I got that evenly placed, it's time to go into the inside and do the structure part of the bustle. So the middle part of the bustle is longer and then the ending of the bustle area, if that makes sense, is shorter. When you pull that all straight into an even parallel line to the ground, you have a nice full middle section of the bustle area. So after I marked the middle longer section and then the two side sections that are shorter, I just scrunched this area up using some twill tape. This twill tape will be my base of the bustle construction process. And after I get that scrunched up, I'm now just evening out these wrinkles so that I get a nice even look to the gathers that this is creating. After doing this, I did put it back onto the hoop skirt just to see what the bustle was looking like and I pissed around with the placement of this twill tape a bit just to create the perfect bustle shape. After that was all good, I then sewed through all these layers. As you can see, I'm hand sewing it. I did not want to bring this all to the sewing machine and risk catching the wrong parts of the fabric, and so I just did a hand stitch. After doing this, the middle section of the bustle still needs some support to keep it up and more parallel to the ground. So I am attaching some ribbon here that pulls up that middle section to create a nice even bustle, which keeps that fullness in the bustle part of the skirt. And again, I hand sew these in place because no need to use a machine.
And then of course, there's a second bustle section to the skirt. And I did that with the same method as the first bustle. When placing it on the dress form to check the look of the second bustle, I realized I just had way too much fabric in this back section. It's really full and it has a lot of wrinkles to that back train. And if you look at the pictures of the original dress, you don't have a lot of fullness to this train. So after that, we went on a little reverse trip. And now we're back to completing this second bustle. After that bustle was complete and finished, it's now time to hem it. And yes, this center back section is really long. I wanted to make sure that it was long enough, so I cut it really long. And then when I took out that extra fabric, it made it look even longer and weirder, but it just gets trimmed away. By the way, this was really scary trimming this fabric, but you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. For this hem, I am using a faced hem, so I am copying the final angle and curve of each skirt panel piece, and then I'm creating a, about a 5 inch section of silk that I cut out and then I sewed it into place. This creates a nice hem, and personally it's one of my favorite hemming techniques, because when you have a curve to your hem, and if you turn that hem up like a conventional hem. It's got that extra fabric and it's gotta go somewhere so you have to make tucks or you have to gather it or something like that and I really 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 don't like doing that. So a faced hem is one of my favorite ways to do it. You might have noticed the very large seam allowance. This was laziness because I needed my hem shorter but I didn't want to take the time to go around the entire hem and hem it a half inch. So I'm doing an inch seam allowance after getting this facing piece sewn in place, I am now going to trim down my seam allowance. You'll notice that I'm cutting the facing seam allowance at a quarter inch and the other skirt seam allowance at a half inch. This eases the bulk of the seam allowances into the rest of the hem, so you don't see a stark line where those seam allowances end. And now we iron. When you're turning something completely flat onto itself, you first want to press open the seam allowance. This makes the turning process much easier and you get a nice crisp edge before even having to iron it. It's really a huge time saver and makes the finished result way easier. So remember guys, press open your seam first and then turn the fabric in onto itself. And now, a lot of hand sewing to get this facing sewn in place. I am using a fell stitch. I go into the lining of the skirt first, and then I poke up into the folded edge of the inner facing and repeat.
and about two and a half work hours later, the hem is finished. I was totally expecting this to take way longer than two and a half hours, but hey, I'm not complaining. I actually got something done faster than I was anticipating, which never happens. With that, the skirt is basically finished. Not 100% because as we all know, there are flowers along the back. That will all be in a separate video. I'm going to do an embellishment video for both the skirt and the bodice. But you also might notice that I didn't hem the netting layer. If you look at the original dress, there is definitely a very large deep hem at the bottom of the netting. And I will be doing this with my skirt, but I cut it too short. Yeah, I did. I cut the netting layer when I was cutting the silk when I shouldn't have. But oh well, I'm going to improvise and I will get that deep hem. I just wasn't able to finish it in time to put it in this part of the video. So maybe next one I'll show you what I did. Also, there will be a petticoat that will cover up the hoop skirt and the petticoat that is showing right now. I really don't like the look of it right now and it kind of makes me scared that maybe I did the hem too short, but the petticoat, the bright pink petticoat will make up for that. At least I hope it will. And with that, thank you all for watching this video and I look forward to the next installment in this video series. As always, you can subscribe if you haven't already because I post quite often about sewing adventures and journeys. And like, comment your thoughts, anything, but be nice. And also a huge thank you to my patrons who make these projects possible and are literally making the Cinderella dress project possible. If you want to be a part of that, you can find the link down below. And now go out into your own sewing area and learn, create, and inspire.